down in the dirt. And this one happens to be called Carpool, which I thought was a hysterical oh, title to have for a car that's been in flames at the fire department. <laughs> Just went to clean up and that's Carpool. Um, from this issue, I thought I would look through and share a couple haikus and a few poems. Um, we'll just read them off in order. Um, haiku soul. My spirit always caresses, warms, and supports so you can fly. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> uh -huh, this one. I missed the first one. Yeah, I don't want that first one. Anymore. That's not a happy one. Um, this one is called Earth. Craters, mountains, plains, rattlers, bison, deer, and elk. Experience Earth. Yeah, that's um, good too. How many times do you run into different things when traveling? Yeah, it's true. This one's called Lost. Teasing, ridicule, trapped in this wretched cycle. I have lost control. Mm. And then we go to Jumped. Black and blue, prison surrounded me, so I jumped into the abyss. Whoa. Now I'm going to go with the actual poems as it was the short haikus. This one is called Exempt from the Draft. I'm not from a military family. My father, because of the size of his family he raised, he was always exempt from the draft. But when the Gulf War started, I heard my friends saying they wanted to sign up to fight, and I was nervous that they'd go, that they'd be taken away from me. I know when you're young, you've got something to prove, and combat shows off your machismo, but everyone, because they're young, thinks they're invincible. Yeah. And you're not. <laughs> so lucky me, all stayed here, and I didn't have to worry about my chicks leaving their flock before their time. But you, you came from a military family, Army, Navy, the Marines. And I hear stories of your father stationed in Europe, and I hear you tell stories of flying at night to other countries ready to fight. And maybe I'm the one who likes to keep the ones I love too close to me. But all I can say is that I'm glad I didn't know you in your military days. Mm. Because I'd worry too much. And this is only one reason why I'm grateful that you're here with me today. Oh, that's true. Exempt from the draft. Mm -hmm. This one, I have no idea what this one's about. So I'm just going to read this. Cool, you know what I'm talking about. 2016 Grateful Edition. I have no idea. We'll see. I have thought about you lately. I know it has been years since we have talked, and I know you probably hate me, and maybe you want something different in life, but maybe, just for a minute, I would be a nice diversion for you. Maybe I could tell you that I've gone through a lot, too, and maybe we could find consolation in each other. Because I remember those days. You were my beacon. You were my light at the end of the tunnel, and I will always be grateful to you for this. Friends could see your photo from my wallet, and they'd call you... Superman. <laughs> a two inch by three inch photo of you holding a newspaper in front of your grandparents' house in the Florida sun. <laughs> Superman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because maybe after all this time, you would like to be the kind of man that you could never be around me before. Maybe you could talk to me and say things you couldn't tell anyone. Well, at least not in public places. Maybe you could, maybe you would know what I'm talking about. I've always been grateful for that hope that you gave me when you made me feel like I was worth something. And I'm grateful for that. I will always thank you because my point is I've been looking for things. And maybe, just maybe, you are looking for things too. Maybe I could be that for you. And maybe. You could do that for me too. Yeah, maybe. And <laughs> maybe I'm like I have no idea where that one's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I'm, I'm going to end with this one because it sounds nicer at the end, and it's called "Only as an Observer." And by the way, 
I got tennis Serena. <laughs> it reminds me that Nadal is playing this afternoon. I'm like, I don't have it taped. I don't get to see. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I like my tennis. This is a poem that is not about tennis. Um, this is called Only an Observer. I know I'm supposed to be the creative one, but I started my schooling in engineering. I say I'm a writer, I say I'm an artist, but I haven't known what to say to you. But I want you to understand that if I were a painter, I'd paint my love for you like I'd be Michelangelo and paint my love for you like it was the Sistine Chapel, our hands touching in the sky, <laughs> like it was our last supper. Mm. Mixed what am I saying? Sense. Painting like Michelangelo. I'd probably paint like Jackson Pollock, <laughs> calling splashings and drippings art. <laughs> so, so maybe I'm not a writer. Maybe I'm not an art artist. Maybe I'm an observer, looking out in the universe, learning what makes everything, everything. Because molecule by molecule, we originate from stardust. But outer space is a violent place. Violent explosions create the stars, and our Earth has earthquakes, avalanches, volcanoes, tsunamis, typhoons. And in all this madness, somehow, I've found you. Mm. The journalist in me observed you. I came to you asking questions and broke your hardened shell. And with you, I've walked on the tops of glaciers, crouching down from the violent winds. With you, I've watched solar storms near the Arctic Circle's Aurora Borealis. We've even dunk it, taken a dance over the green, watched a dance over Greenland from our window, forty thousand feet in the air. I've held your hand at the Great Wall of China. You've followed me, retracing the steps of Darwin. We've, we've, you've steered me clear of a rattlesnake bed. <laughs> you've shown me how to shoot and reload gun magazines and how to hold an AR-15. Because I've seen galaxies collide. I've seen comets smash into planets. I've seen supernova and the death of stars. And in all that, I've still found you. Because, <laughs> as I said before, I'm only an observer. But I've found what I've been looking for. And with these observations, I thee wed. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah. And I'll tighten my grip on your hand <laughs> because I never want to let you go. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>